good evening everybody i'm sheetal vadwa from alumni relations office welcome to the fourth uh, webinar series of 2020 today's uh, topic is introduction to design thinking and none other than dr suranjan das we all know him uh, the moderator for today's uh, webinar is pratiksha shanbag she is the current pgp2 participant and from operations and supply chain specialization over to you sir thank you sheetal Yes. Thank you, team. Thank you, Ratika. Uh, welcome, Pratiksha. Okay, we begin here. So we have a time four zero three. We have a three minutes delayed start. Uh, I shall begin with a picture and a short story. Okay. So there's a truck, and uh, this truck is uh, on a highway. It is stuck on uh, the outskirts of the city and an underbridge. Uh, part of the carriageway on top uh, has broken. You know, and the truck has overestimated by six inches. the container got uh, damaged and there's a traffic jam who will you first call for help so normally what happen the type of responses which i have uh, found you know i've seen is that uh, we call the roads and safety department you know it all depends upon the way you look at it those who will look at the bridge will call the roads and safety department you know those who will look at the truck if the truck is stuck will call a gas cutter or the company emergency response team those who will look at the traffic jam will call the police and so on and so forth again so the perspective with which you look at a certain context drives you to look for a solution in that area so now if everyone arrives there will be a big debate you know which one to do first which one to do second and so on and so forth okay so what happens is that everybody is an expert who is called right nobody is a novice all those guys who have been listed on top and they'll all give a solution which is necessary right what happens is that now if i tell you the set, the truck was carrying sand or say cement bags or mattresses or a ppp ppe or a covid kit you know or glass glass shutters or vegetables uh, will the decision change and what happens in most cases yes now you have a different set of contents you know and are going to change the decisions so based on that people will look for those corresponding resources what happened so far is everyone thought about the place where the truck is stuck you know and did anyone ask is there a very large hospital on this highway probably no one asked that question second is there a school nearby on this highway uh, is it a way to the airport which means now the traffic is very different now traffic jam becomes more important you know or other export items inside you know for example the letter of credit expires today today is the last day the truck is going to the border and you know then the the contents are more important than anything else and it has to be reached at the border and so on and so forth so now suddenly there is a kind of perspective from the left hand side of your screen versus to the right hand side of your screen from the left hand side of the screen whoever got affected are all associated with the truck accident the 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 bridge the truck the contents but whoever is on the right of your screen they have got nothing to do with the truck they don't need anything inside the truck uh, and but they are stakeholders which we have never thought of probably so what did we learn from this we learned that we normally tend to give solutions very fast because we there are experts and you saw those experts coming up they'll all give certain kind of suggestions but then there are other stakeholders human beings who are nearby in the vicinity so there are real people who are stuck in a real jam and they were not covered so now it's a propensity to always give solution we should stop ourselves pause and say hey it's a different problem and we need to define the problem very well so that's what we have figured out from this truck story so by the way in fact the solution is here someone said that why don't you deflate the you know all the four tires the truck will actually go down by 6 inches and you can drive the truck absolutely not a problem uh, so someone looked at it the problem from a completely different way so having started we will now give an agenda we finish the truck story so the next 55 minutes that's how we will we will proceed we will talk about this vuka world which is the volatile uncertain the complex i put cs in red because it's the covid world is the corona virus world uh, and of course uh, the ambiguity the vuka world Uh, then we may talk about what is this animal called design thinking and why do we need to learn this and if there are certain steps what are those steps we will have two more stories there's a story of rohit and there's a story of aditi and maybe if there's some ice cream going around in the middle of the day uh, so we will figure out that ice cream aspect 
And if you like, you want to step out for an ice cream or a coffee, coffee, uh, you, know, you can also do that and come back. So we'll talk about some inciting and uh, we'll see if design thinking is unique. You know, once again, three more stories will come towards the latter part uh, of, this, of this session today. Uh, something on workplace, uh, something uh, because we are all working from home, the joy of flying, which you have forgotten for the last three months, and something about your travel bag and so on and so forth. And we will uh, round it off with a special way. DT is very special SP for us. And that's our brand. And DT is for life. And that's how we will proceed. Okay. The world is changing very rapidly. We call it the VUCA world. I think I mentioned that. It, it's a very volatile world. The world is changing uh, so rapidly. It is an uncertain world. So what does it mean to you? So, you know, uh, on this, in this, there couldn't have been a, you know, a better state of VUCA ness than what we are going through right now. Uh, we really don't know, you know, where we're working. Some organizations are saying we don't need our offices. You can work from home. Uh, some uh, local brand, global brand said, Ki, okay, I'm going to pay you everything. You know, you work one third of the workforce will be at home. Uh, contracts will be taken, looked at it differently. Sweet shops will have to open differently. Canteens will have to look at differently. So what does it mean to you? I have listed some four or five things here. So now how do you want to work? You look at the current problem or you want to look at a new problem? Second, can you keep pace with the changes and the threats? So it's all about you, you know. Third, how do you make a transition for you and your team? I put the word smooth in italics because I'm not too sure the transition will be smooth given the uncertainty. But you still have to make a transition, you know, proceed. And therefore, what additional skills would you need? So are you prepared for this? So that's the whole story. And in fact, you know, every day, uh, uh, the some sort of a problem bothers us uh, and uh, we need to be prepared for this. So let's see, what is design thinking? Uh, the three gentlemen, Tim Brown, uh, Tom Kelly and Roger Martin, uh, the first two of them at IDEO and Martin, uh, he was actually with the RIM Research in Motion, that is the Blackberry unit, he was the director there. And then of course, uh, he moved to Rotman Business School and three of them have started this design thinking around uh, over two decades ago. And uh, so what is this? Design thinking is a problem solving process. And if you like adjectives, you can also say it's a creative problem solving process. And by the way, we all agree that we all of us are creative. That's why I put a red tick mark. So creativity is, is at the is core of uh, design thinking. So it's a problem solving process. Okay, then what? Design thinking is a philosophy. It's a mindset. What is this mindset? So, you know, look at this truck problem. I put those two letters, if you can see that in N and W, N is for, for narrow, it's a narrow perspective. So uh, the truck was stuck in the underbridge and then either the truck was damaged or the stuff inside was getting, you know, delayed for, for a delivery somewhere. Uh, the bridge was broken. Uh, so there was a perspective which is very, very specific and we try to solve that problem. But now the, uh, the philosophy is that the mindset is that it's a much wider problem. So it opens up to the world, right? Uh, so there were those users who were not even a part of the original thinking, you know, the school going child, uh, someone stuck in the traffic, uh, going to the hospital or someone else uh, on that highway. Now they come into our consideration. So it really opens up the world for us. So that's why we say it is a philosophy and it's a mindset to be able to look much wider, much bigger, you know, than what we are currently doing. And what? And of course, we need some tools. So design thinking will also give you some tools. So broadly, we'll say it's a philosophy. It's a mindset to look at things in a very different perspective. Uh, plus, we have some tools and uh, we will try to walk you through uh, some of those tools, uh, you know, and once we have the tools, uh, we have to look into a problem, look at a problem and see if there are creative ways, interesting ways, ingenious ways to solve that problem. Okay, I have just put this in, you see this D, uh, so uh, that, that's the design part. Uh, uh, so we all, all of us knew what is a design uh, and we have all heard of what we know what is thinking. Uh, so design is uh, what we were all product focused. Uh, it was all product centered. Uh, but right now, when we talk of design, it is uh, service-centered. Uh, we are looking at the wider world. Uh, and that's how we have put a layer called a design thinking. So which is the new way of looking at a certain problem. So in a nutshell, what is this? I think I call it, this is design thinking. 
So can you see that left part? It's it, it's it's messy. Uh, uh, so no matter how much you are qualified and talented, you know. Uh, so the truck. So you are a gas cutter, and you know, ha, no problem. Asa ho gaya, to hum jaake kar denge. Uh, so, uh, but well, there are so many other. You know, look at the loops of this this thread. Uh, so it's all jumbled up over here. It's much wider than what you had thought. So this is what I call in design thinking. And by the way, if you notice, I put that nutshell in quotes. So I think it needs to go in quotes. Uh, and by the way, what is more important is that although there is this kind of a, an uncertainty, eventually it leads to a solution. So why do we need to know design thinking? Why? Okay. Almost all new age innovation uses some sort of design thinking. Rest assured on this part, you know. And there's always a human element to this. Can you see the picture clearly? So the uh, person on the left hand side, you know, uh, uses the umbrella. I hope you can see that. Yeah. And the person on the right hand side uses the umbrella in an inverted way, but the inside of the umbrella, you know, there's a there's a funnel, and with that, this guy is watering the plant that he is taking. Right? Both of them have the primary objective of uh, you know saving himself or herself from the rain. Uh, but the way you look at it, the first person was looking at himself or herself. The second person also has a much wider. Uh, uh, you know, stakeholder that is the plant and has figured out things to be able to save both himself or herself as well as the plant. So there's a human element to everything. Then what? Then important for you is that whether you are a service designer or a product manager or, 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 a, or a product designer, anything related to innovation these days, especially in this current, you know, uncertainty context, anything you think of innovation now will involve an human centered design by the way hcd is human centered design and it's the other name of design thinking so that's the reason you need to know design thinking you want to talk to an organization you want to talk to some you know specialists you want to talk to your friends you will always find that the problems are currently the state of problems they are, they need to be looked at in a very different kind of a perspective and everyone's talking of innovation people are talking of human beings people are talking of uh, uh, design thinking in some form uh, so that's the reason I thought you need to know uh, design thinking. So human-centered design, again, there are two main questions. Very, very important. The first question is that who are you designing for? So I, I put a picture of all those customers, you know, uh, they, are, they are users. So by the way, in design thinking, we uh, do not like this uh, choice of the word customer or a consumer. We say users. Uh, so we talk about users. But what happens if you're designing for them? It is not, look at that, can you see that one part is, I hope you're not designing for only for one specific segment, you know, uh, in marketing, we say that there are segments and they're the targeted uh, part of the segment and so on and so forth. You need to look at a much wider uh, gamut of uh, stakeholders. Who are you designing for? And secondly, what are their needs? So these are the two questions. And if you are good with these two questions, uh, uh, I think we, are, uh, we, we had a good start. So two key questions, if you can answer. So I think we are going to you know, demystify both of these, uh, the who are you designing for and what are their needs? Okay, <clears throat> so how can you do that? Uh, we say by immersing, you need to uh, be in that in their situation, you know? Uh, okay, so who are the real users? It's very important. So, you know, these are the set of guys, I hope you can see the picture on the left hand side. They are designing some systems for a large, very large warehouse. Okay, so they, they've got all the RG, the requirements gathering phase, uh, they've got, got the, uh, the clarification kind of a phase, and they're writing some codes and software, uh, but they're sitting here. And it's very different from sitting here than going actually to the right hand side, if you see the warehouse. Uh, of course, you're going to design things which takes care of the guy who is using the forklift, uh, the ch guy at the checkout counter, the systems terminal, which will tell you, you know, which bin, which tray, which item is stored, the air conditioning system, you will have a whole lot of those contexts, uh, context related users. But along with that, I'm sure there'll also be a certain kind of users and a type of concern which they will have. Uh, they won't be able to tell you and you will never be able to know unless you actually reach the warehouse and, and, and do this kind of a uh, survey. So you have to immerse yourself. That's the first point. Second point is that you immerse fine, right? But what you also need is that you need to show empathy. And uh, uh, how does one show empathy? <clears throat> how does one show empathy? It's say uh, you see uh, the users, you see their world. It's very important how you see their world. 
you appreciate those people as human beings very important now it is even you need to also include animals you need to understand the feelings and of course you need to communicate so uh, there's these are broadly the four ways by which you you show empathy and finally we put the user and the user's actual experience in the center of your entire thinking the user and the user's experience has to be in the center of the entire thinking process so now we have steps what are the steps of design thinking broadly we say we empathize uh, uh what is empathize so when we empathize of course uh, we immerse and empathize uh, we observe the, the best way is uh, to observe go close as close as possible uh, make sure you you have you know nowadays we will say make sure you have your mask and your pp uh, but uh, you empathize you observe uh, you be a fly on the wall uh, you you ask questions uh that's how essentially you want to figure out what's the persona is like it's what's the persona is like whoever it is once you uh finish uh, the empathy part you have to define the problem essentially you have to figure out what exactly are the needs what do they need uh, what are their problems what are their challenges you know what uh, frustrates them uh what are they happy with uh, and so on and so forth have all these kinds of questions so that's the define with that you will get some some lead you ha ah, this is what they need right Pro or probably what they need now once you're done with that you have to ideate you have to look for a solution you have to look for a solution process so you have to match those special insights special needs you know special challenges special frustrations of your customers or users and then you have to provide something for them right uh, so then you know what happens the team sits and ideates they they will do a lot of sharing and you will see a lot of post its going around the place uh and in that phase what happens in ideation you will find how different people are looking at the same challenge but addressing in different ways so that's what we call ideation once we have done with the ideation we do a prototype essentially uh, we uh, select uh, some of those ideas and make some what we realistic very tangible kind of stuff uh, so if you want to give me a watch uh, you know which will essentially uh, tell me whether uh, you know my child is feeling all right in school and you want to have a remote idea so you need i need to have a, have a the watch you know some version of that you know it may not be a final one but still it will give me some ideas about what are my feelings what do i like what about my child's information the school information and so on and so forth so it it's something like a wearable but you have to try it out and see whether i feel comfortable or not or uncomfortable so that's the prototype and finally we take the prototype for testing and we go to the prospective users and we go to the real people by the way and not only real people we have to go to the real people in the real context so if you see in design thinking nothing is uh, agnostic to the nothing is free from the context it has to be connected to the context so that's what the steps are in design thinking let me do a small time check uh, i think uh, oh, it's 419 that's all right okay and by the way the process i have mentioned is non linear is so that we have to go round and round and uh, one after it is not really linear 1 2 3 4 and 5 uh, but by the way uh, before i move on to the next slide let me caution you <clears throat> uh, these are five steps and mind you each one of these steps each one of the five will have certain detailed sub steps so design thinking does not mean that you have to do a b c d e like that no design thinking is not a recipe you know it does not this steps will not give you a recipe of what you have to do for a solution no it will never give you you know what will give you a recipe is what we call a design sprint what is the what does that mean so you take up a problem courier chaps are coming over and courier guys are delivering they are also you know high finding it very difficult uh they also have their family and life and fear uh, uh okay and uh, what can you do for them you know so that they feel safe and so on and so forth that that's a problem so under each one of them there will be some sub points you will have to take those sub points specific to this courier guy you know you have to take those sub points specific to the consumer or the user or the chap who is getting a courier under each one of them then design a certain process or a product or a glove or a Uh, or some uh, notepad and so on and so forth uh, for that guy so then you say you have done what's called a design sprint a design for a particular context then only we will say it's a recipe so design thinking is not a recipe but i would say that design sprint for a purpose for a user for a solution will be the recipe for recipe for that solution okay okay so we'll a uh, lot of 
you know, 20 minutes of a lot of talk. Let's go into storytelling once again. Rohit. Rohit went for her birthday party. Okay, so this is Rohit. Uh, I hope you are doing all right. Uh, so Rohit went for his friends. Uh, it's her birthday today. And uh, I want to say hi. And by the way, Rohit goes to the self-service counter. There is a fruity and those yellow fruity and maza packets are there. Uh, so he goes over there, right? But what happened? Rohit has diabetes. 175 is, is more or less on the higher side. So what will Rohit need? So a lot of people will say, ha, very simple. Rohit will need, Rohit, uh, he will need some sugar-free drink, right? And yes, uh, lo and behold, the company has come up with, can you see those, uh, those blue uh, packs? So Rohit straight away walks to the corner of the room, goes and picks up the blue packet. Why? How did he pick that up? How, how does he know? Because it's there in the media and everyone knows that. So he doesn't have to ask anyone. He picks up the blue packet and then goes around. He's walking around. What happens? So suddenly people will see him in a, having a blue colored packet of juice and everyone knows. Now suddenly he will be in the center of attention. People who do not need to know, you know, Mrs. Uh, Agarwal will say, ha, ah, Rohit, oh my God, blue packet. Oh God, what's happened? Diabetes. Oh my God, Rohit, blue packet. So suddenly his privacy is short changed. But did the company take care of Rohit's needs? of giving him a sugar-free drink where he wanted? Of course, of course, there's no issue, very much. So the need has been taken care of. Now look at a rival brand. What a rival brand, this is a rival brand. Can you see? I hope you can see on the right-hand side. Uh, uh, if, if the Zoom thing is coming up, you can minimize it so that you can see on the right part of my screen. So rival fruit brand, what it does is that, uh, it, if you see, can you see those uh, ones? Those are all yellow packs, just like the fruity pack, but there's a small significant blue color dot in the front. I don't know if you can see it, but that's how I've done it. So Rohit quickly picks that up and goes around and, and the blue dot is against his hand and no one can figure out. So what did the second brand do, which the first brand did not? The second brand realized that along with the rational need, there's also an, an emotional need, you know, the need for privacy, the need to be not talked down about health and hygiene and doctor habits and so on and so forth. That is what we call as an insight. So the second brand, of course, had the insight and, and there's no denying that the second guy is going to walk away with the honors uh, compared to the first manufacturer. Okay, so we say uh, fruity, uh, giving fruity, which is sugar-free was a rational need. The, uh, the rival brand gave an emotional need. And then we say we define this word insight. What is an insight? An insight is a combination of a rational and an emotional need. And brands, uh, products, or, or companies, organizations, uh, which look, after, look at both of these needs are going to score a point higher. Uh, provided, of course, you have gone into all users. You know, you can't do this uh, inside for just only for a select category of users. No, for all users who are a touch point to your product or service. Okay, we now move to Aditi. Okay, Aditi, I think she's sitting in the center, right? Can you see? Yeah, she has a credit card. So these are the credit cards which Aditi has. And in these days of digital payments, uh, this is very familiar with all of us. And uh, I remember you know, every day I, I'm coming in, or rather not every day, once a week when I have to go out uh, you know, for some purchases, images, or go to the medical store, I come back and I know wash these, uh, my credit card with soap and so many times. So it's become a part and parcel of our life. So if a brand wants to launch another payment gateway or a card, what will be the need of this uh, user? We know that, you know, it has to be safe and so blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So there will be a rational need, you know, easy ease of payment. And so I can use it on the net and uh, many reasons, uh, many criteria for launching a card. It is to be different, uh, what my competitors are doing. But one particular conversation which uh, someone had with a set of uh, potential credit card users was pretty startling. For me, it was startling. You know what happened? What this guy said? Said that, hey, I use an Amex card. I have all these cards. Yeah, Aditi has all these cards. She said that uh, I use the Amex card because I get the highest number of points. And once one of my relative had was go short change in terms of usage of a card. And uh, so I'm a little scared. So what I do is that I also have a Paytm account and I send my money from my Amex card to the Paytm account. And then I use the Paytm account to defray all my expenses. I feel very safe, I feel very secure. 
is an insight. So when you know this insight, you're going to launch something very different, uh, a very different co-branding uh, of your product than if you do not know such an insight. An insight wouldn't happen just like that. You know, people are not going to tell you. A questionnaire survey is not enough to tell you insights. You have to, as I said, immerse and have a lot of empathy. When you get people into conversations, in storytelling, kya hua tha, kaise hua tha, uh, they may not even know you have to probe them, you know, with open-ended questions. Uh, then you get those deeper uh, insights, the mysteries. So it's all about finding all those mysteries. So let's see if this... Uh, mm, let me just stop share and figure out if the mm, I'll share once again, just a moment. Yeah. It should. Let me know if the sound is not, not working. Is it audible? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Got the hint. Uh, uh, so uh, the the products, the product department, the services department, the quality department, all of the departments, they really went upside down. They couldn't figure out uh, what is the connection of a car not starting when you are buying vanilla ice cream. Uh, so that's what I, I thought uh, is an insight because it took longer uh, for uh, any other ice cream to be given, and by that time the car used to get heated. Whereas if you're buying vanilla, it's straight up there. By the time you come back, the Car, car takes its own cycle. So that's what I say by, the, by insight. So some useful tips for insight. Uh, uh, I hope you can see the screen. Uh, insight is very specific. It can be customized, of course, with limited success. Uh, so how do you know it's an insight? As you keep hearing more and more again, over and over again, uh, something very unusual. Uh, so then you know, ha, ah, there's something coming. I already told you that quantitative market surveys will never give you an insight. So you have to do in-depth interviews, immersive in-depth interviews. Uh, client, you know, in the trouble is that many a time your, your, your client uh, or your uh, team lead may not say, may not like, say, hey, this is a, it's a chota sample, small, small sample, low sample. How can we even go ahead with your recommendations? Uh, well, uh, it's a tough call, but you will have to still uh, do, uh, come up with, with, uh, with a response. The response is that uh, I may actually have a depth interview of a very few, very small sample size, but I'll give you things, views, just like the context you know, study. Uh, if you go to 1,000 customers, nobody will be able to connect this with the vanilla. But if you go to one or two of them, you'll get some insights. Storytelling is very important for inciting and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the, the second last point is important. Uh, it happened in one of the organizations. Uh, uh, the, uh, I felt that uh, I wanted to know that ha, uh, you are selling your products across certain supply chains uh, uh, in your channel. I said, oh, I want to look at what's happening in this, that particular channel, that particular, uh, you know, uh, area. 
But the company said, no, 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 Voto, it's not big. It's not important. They're not very relevant to our business. They don't give us a lot much of value, you know, as a part uh, of, of a share of the market revenues uh, so that's a product which we are not very keen but it's okay the guy is doing all right so even if your client says that either element hey you say no 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 uh, we are going to go and see there what's happening and look at diverse uses <clears throat> very quickly uh, these are some of the tools you know uh, rules rather we need to have very mixed teams diverse teams one conversation at a time uh, no hierarchy uh, on the left hand side i have let ideas flow you know we should not judge others uh, build on the others, ideas of others, stay focused. And at the bottom of the screen, if you see learn from failure, very, very important, along with the boss who demands wild ideas. So uh, these are some of the rules. Uh, let's see how we're doing on time. 33, all right. Is, it, is design thinking unique? Uh, design thinking, it uses the same skills, uh, but uh, say ethnography, forming, norming, but at higher levels, I told you. Uh, we need to move from product design to services design, society design. We have to move from mainstream product designs to extreme product design you know, with an eye of ad on adaptation. Uh, uh, there's a lovely uh, video of uh, Nike. Uh, one can go and see that. Uh, so I told you it's a non-linear process. Uh, uh, this is important. Uh, it's, it's good to, you know, it's great to spend a lot of time in the insight followed by a good idea than to have a very quick understanding of the insight and I will have a great solution. No. Instead of that, spend a lot of time on the inside. And if your insight is very good, uh, your idea will automatically follow. Uh, of course, we need to do multiple iterations. Uh, that, these are the uniqueness of design thinking, multiple iterations. A solution, I say falling in love is important. If, so we said in design thinking, we don't fall in love with the solution. We fall in love with the problem. And uh, avoid the end of batch evaluations. Uh, uh, this is continuous testing for, is very important. Uh, this reminds me of that, uh, uh, so the nuts and bolts uh, kind of a problem uh, with, uh, with a certain organization. Uh, they're saying that, uh, hey, we have absolutely fantastic quality check at the end of the supply line. We, we make those bolts, nuts and bolts. Uh, we have a fabulous, but then, you know, we're not getting a great response from our customers. Uh, so what's happening? So we say end of batch evaluations, even if you're doing a fantastic evaluation, what will happen is that if you, if, you, if you ramp up your assessment at the end, your quality check, you will only have a large number of rejects. You, your rejects will increase. Instead of that, you come back, you know, you take a step back and see uh, what has been the process issues uh, of manufacturing those nuts and bolts and uh, freeze those aspects and then you're good to go. Okay, uh, one more video, reimagining. Can you reimagine the workplace? I think I have a video going. Let's see what they've done. Yes, these colleagues are moving their office for the third time this month, and they don't mind it at all. It's a good feeling. It's nice, it's bright, it's spacious. Their workplace is the newly opened SAP App House in Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> a place that looks anything but a common office environment. As the name indicates, here the latest SAP applications are invented, in a very homey environment. The use of space is the key for this next generation office. It's a way of continuously developing the way SAP spaces and work culture work. SAP has become a very rigid system and App House is an attempt to really break into the opposite of that, of creating completely flexible spaces. Flexibility is the key word. Everything here is mobile. Desks, screens, furniture, even the walls, opening up endless opportunities to invent your workspace. If they decide to uh, work with uh, UI developers, etc., they can pull their desks over to that. If they want to work in, in the sun, maybe that's their creative space. Everybody, I think, has a creative space. Then they can move into that creative space wherever it is. In a classical environment, if you want to move your desk, you have to call facilities, you have to call IT, get it disconnected, etc. And in the App House, we have specifically um, designed it so that you do this yourself. This notion of freedom is part of design thinking that is at the foundation of the App House. To find innovative solutions for their users, the teams can write and draw literally everywhere. Colorful props such as toys and games are there to spark creativity, giving the office almost the touch of a playground, which the teams take to. We are, now have a, an environment which is conducive to development. And what I mean is that 
the combinations of our tools and technologies are great people and the most important pieces around collaboration and being creative is what is the lifeblood of our development. At the beginning it was fun, yeah. You, you draw on the, everyone was drawing pictures on the wall, but now you really use it and, and you see that there are benefits. It's the flexible environment and the swift formation of teams that enables faster innovations, breaking down silos and enabling innovation cycles of only 90 days from the first scratch to deployment, an ability that's crucial for SAP to maintain its number one status in the application space. We need to be agile, innovative, thinking differently, collaborating across the company. And, and the intellectual renewal is, is the setup for that. So this kind of an effort helps us to achieve those kind of goals, makes us nimble, makes us, makes us think differently. And App House makes us creative. It's a, it's, a, it's a representation of what it means for SAP. The App House at SAP Dublin is the first location to embrace this new model permanently. Further labs around the world will follow this trend, and it's sure to find many new fans among the SAP employees. The next generation office space, yeah, that's what we need to be um, leaders in our, in our market. And it's also very bright, we can see other teams working. So I'll move from here. All right, so let's take one more example. Uh, the three most small stories. Look at this. You are helping an airlines uh, to design and deliver a better passenger experience in long international flights. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Uh, so this is what, what are the experiences of passengers you will address? Of course, what are the solutions you will address? And normally, uh, uh, if we give this exercise and we give this as a part of the exercise, uh, you know, participants, uh, uh, they come up with things uh, associated with food, uh, with entertainment, uh, of uh, comfort, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, uh, so a lot of them. And even I, I've tried this, you know, a 10 minute exercise, a five minute exercise, even a 15 minute exercise. Uh, and the longer time I gave, uh, uh, the, the type of solutions are very, very uh, detailed, uh, very, very, I mean, they're amazing actually, even new. Again, what happens is that uh, if the insight is uh, what you already think you know, and then you try to work on the solution, and then you, you better the solutions, you up the ante, you make it technologically more savvy, and so on and so forth, you do give a good experience to the user, there's no doubt about it. However, if you now step back and say, hey, what are the different kinds of experiences uh, you know, my passengers would, would, would have? What are the different needs my passengers would have? Then you know you will have a completely different aspects. By the way, on the bottom of the screen, that photograph on the bottom of the screen, you can see behind that, I don't know if you can recognize that is the logo of Japan Airlines. So this is a Japan Airlines uh, aircraft. And you know what they've done? Next slide. So uh, when you book your seat, can you see that? What do you see? So whenever you book your seat, it will tell you where babies are sitting in the flight. So a child icon will, icon, sorry, will automatically pop up to alert the passengers where a child which is between eight days and two years old. By the way, below eight days, uh, the, the Vienna Convention doesn't allow a baby to fly uh, under eight days. So anyone between eight days and two years, uh, the kids are there so that at the end of a long, tiring flight, you, want, you would not want to be close to a child. So this guy, Rahat Ahmed, I remember, uh, he was tweeting, thank you, Japan Airlines officials, for warning me where babies plan to scream and yell during my 13-hour trip. This ought to be mandatory across the board. Initially, of course, this guy was trolled, you know. Uh, but subsequently, uh, uh, he, he became the flavor of the town, uh, and the airlines has picked up. And subsequently, there are other airlines have picked this up. Uh, the source I've given, the Guardian and so on and so forth, you can go out and see this. Uh, so again, what has happened? So all those responses which came initially were, were rational needs. You know, remember that? The rational needs and the emotional needs, the, the, the cup which Rohit had. And uh, so once again, if you think of these, and by the way, Japan Airlines has monetized this. So if you are booking a seat which is, you know, uh, uh, 15 uh, feet away in radius from the child, from the infant, you're going to pay more. So just like we have aisle seat is more and window seat is more, that's past, you know, that's gone. Why do you look at those dimensions? So if you, so uh, Japan Airlines, I'm told on an Airbus uh, 777, 
which has closed around 580 seats, they got the money or worth of another 15 seats extra uh, simply by monetizing these. Again, the way of looking at it. All right, next one, next story. Uh, you have three lovely suitcases. Okay, we are getting the suitcases. Uh, okay, hi. So look at this. So this is one suitcase. This looks snazzy, right? I think I would want this one. Yep. So this one costs 9,200 rupees, okay? However, and I'm sure there are a lot of marketing guys here in the forum, uh, including my marketing professors. Uh, I'm also in a half my heart, more than half my heart is in there. So uh, the marketing guys, they put a price point. They said, if you buy these two more, which is 5,400 rupees, uh, so buy one, get two free, it is packaged. All three of them will cost only 14,600. Uh, did I get this, this, this summation, sum total right? Four, six, seven, ah, thankfully I got it right. Yeah, 14,600 for three. And there's no denying that all of us will fall flat for this. We are going to go for this, right? <clears throat> Just a minute, there's a message here. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So uh, now if I ask you that, what are the considerations of buying a suitcase? You're going to give me a lot of reasons, uh, okay? But there's something else happens. Let's see what happens. If you're helping a company design a new innovative kind of a stroller bag, who will you talk to? That's a question I normally ask. And the participants in the class, they have to undertake this exercise. And I give them around 10 minutes. And now people are thinking, hey, hey, you know, by this time, you know, 45 minutes of the, of the class is over. Are there new users that we can talk to? You know, are there new needs which we can address? And uh, that's how it is. So we say the features and functionality. A lot of people talk about the way the suitcase is hard, the wheels are like this, the compartment is so and so and so, etc. etc. Then we also say the packing the suitcase. So we look at the features and functionality or the customer's journey. A would need a certain cavity for the for the putting the shirts and the tie uh, uh, and the ladies with the shoes and uh, you know the cosmetics and so on and so forth. So those may be considerations. So we say the features of functionality, look at the suitcase and design the suitcase or step back from the time you pack your suitcase to the time you unpack your suitcase. What are the things that you need to consider, right? I have one question here. So when you uh, buy a suitcase, which is, you see there's three suitcases, one goes into the other, one goes into the other. Who puts the suitcase, who stores away the suitcase when you are at home, when it is not being used? Where do you keep them? You know, seven out of 10 answers are we keep on top of the <coughs> Almera. Some would say, how oh, A will go into B, B will go into C, all of them. And so it's great. 15,000 rupees and I don't have to give so much shelf space. Uh, it's space saving. Fantastic. The marketing guys have designed that. The product guys have designed it like that. The marketing guys have put a price point. So lucrative. I bought it. But who puts it? You know, seven out of 10 say that the, the house help. Or uh, many of the ladies say, you know, my husband puts it. Uh, that's great. And of course, these days, husbands are very, they've got multi-talented. They're washing dishes. They're sweeping the floor. They're, they're mopping. And they are really become expert. Uh, uh, you know, they're getting their hair cut by their wives and partners and so on and so forth. Husbands are doing amazing things. But if the house help is putting the suitcase up, great. Now see what happens. <clears throat> you buy the suitcase. A, B, and C. I have a series of slides, uh, bear with me. Please pay attention. <clears throat> C goes into B, right? And A, B, C, A goes into A. Step three. Three steps already happened. Now what happened? Step four is that the, the, you have to put the suitcase up on top of your Almera. Now what has happened? It has become heavy, right? Did you consider this? Did the company consider this aspect that the house help is going to put the suitcase on top of the shelf is it important? Is her need or his need important to put it up? All right, very nice. It is up there. You're going on a five day tour, you know, taking the middle one, you know. Now, what happens? Can you think how many steps will be taken by the time you take this out and come back from your tour and all the three suitcases are back up there? It takes 10 or 11 steps. And I very quickly, in a few seconds, I'll run through the steps. Let's see. Step, you are going on a tour, right? So take it down. It's heavy. It's coming down from the, uh, from the Almeida. Okay. Next one. A, B, C comes out of A. Next, C comes out of B. Then you take B. A and C is there. Right? 
uh, and the brothers, uh, you have gone on tour, lovely, you lucky guy. Uh, but the rest of the family members are there. Papa, ye, ke, papa ne do surkis bar chhorke gaya. Mummy kuch karo na. Mummy also says so and so. Now what happens? C goes into A. Then it is still quite heavy. It goes up. Then what happens? You are back from your tour. Step number seven. Take it down. Then C comes out. Then B. C goes into B, and it goes back. Ten steps. Steps. Eleven step is that you push it up. Did we consider this lady, this house help who does all of this work? Did we consider something beyond and what are her or his needs? Okay, so what we have now, uh, when you design it, you have to look at the experience. Uh, you will now have to look at from storage to storage. So earlier it was feature to feature. Then you go your packing to your unpacking. Then you go storage to storage. And now with environment, we have to look at earth to earth because you will also have to uh, uh, you know, dispose of the suitcase and hope it is taken care of. So these are the various kinds of considerations which we have to be able to move ahead. <clears throat> okay, uh, Swatch Bharat toilets, uh, uh, very quickly, uh, did we really understand our users? We have already spent 71,000 crores, uh, uh, but uh, we have data of some of the states. Uh, in some of the states, let me tell you, uh, for a toilet was essential I, essential thing for a toilet is it has four walls or rather three walls and a door and then women in one of the states uh, done on a survey they said that hey you know uh, we would not lie we go to the to the fields with with a relative with with our friends with other women in the morning early morning because that's the only opportunity in a male dominated society that's the only opportunity of going out okay that's one point second uh, a group said that uh, I, when I use the toilet and there's a door in front, the moment I shut the door, of course my rational needs are there because I, it's a toilet and privacy is important. I do not know who is the perpetrator standing outside the door. I'm scared. Now you have given a toilet for a certain reason, but now there are other emotional reasons which need me to consider. And by the way, there are hundreds of stories around Swatch Bharat. I'm not going to that. Just to give you a glimpse of it is so important to understand the emotional needs, the insight piece of all your users. I will skip this. Uh, this is an exercise uh, which I do, but uh, uh, finally I thought uh, how we're we doing in terms of time. Okay, 50. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, a little bit of a recap here. Uh, so in design thinking, what we do is we immerse, uh, we empathize, we observe, uh, you know, you have a fly on the wall that is F4DW, we become a fly on the wall. You do depth interviews, deep insights you gather, and I've given you a number of examples of uh, insights. Uh, keep hearing and you keep hearing more and more is that's your opportunity area you have to design something you know what are the key I, key areas of concern so these three things will give us what is called the insight so the inciting phase of design thinking are these three then you define the approach and uh, we decide what we are going to do uh, we make ideation we make it uh, uh, we, we make the the product or the service or we make prototypes and, and how we make it and so on and so forth. A lot of brainstorming happens, sharing, etc. Uh, then we choose our best idea. And from there, we make a prototype of the solutions. And then we do a continuous feedback to improve the solutions. The blue lines on top, that's the inciting phase. Uh, the, the, the brown ones in the center, that's broadly the ideation. Uh, uh, it actually needs, it begins uh, little inside uh, the ideation tool. And finally, the impact. Ah, this is very important. Uh, people do ask me this question. Uh, was the time check? You have 5.41. I have uh, eight minutes to go. Uh, uh, does every problem need a design thinking approach? Answer is no. Definitely not. So how do we figure out? You know. So we have a structure. Uh, I'll not take time on the structure, but broadly, we say very ill-structured or unstructured problems are the ones which need a design thinking. So how do we know if a problem is ill-structured or unstructured? We have this criteria. Goals. Are the project goals known? Okay, if the project goals is known, suppose uh, uh, an inventory uh, of, uh, of an oxygen rod, you know, uh, goes down, uh, which is used in, in a plant, in an engineering plant, uh, in a furnace, uh, it's called a lancing rod. So if it goes down, so it's a very clear, okay, known. So, uh, but it needs an inciting. If it is unknown, it still needs an inciting. The stakeholder perception, perception of different users, is it known? Then we say, hey, no, we do not know the perception. But, but for, uh, uh, for an oxygen lancing rod, which is uh, not there in the stock, of course, we know the stakeholder perception, the user department we know, 
the seller we know the contractual clauses we know finance department the processes are known so we know how what are the perceptions of all the other people so if it is half known we say half known needs inciting constraints rules laws principles and so on and so forth here we keep ticking this also needs inciting so out of these first three if you know if any two of them has an unknown or half known we think that hey design thinking will be worth it any two out of the three are fall into no unknown or half known category what are the other two criteria the dimensions we say the alternatives which we have and finally the impact of the solution uh, this needs the rapid prototyping so all the five dimensions have been covered on the right hand side the inciting phase the ideation phase and the rapid prototyping phase and we say that in structure situation is that any two of them and i told you is a design thinking problem uh, of course the one below is you got innovation so finally we have i think last couple of slides and design thinking the sp the spgmr way uh, i did, i was speaking about suitcases right uh, and if you see on the left hand side one of our uh, groups so one of our uh, student groups uh, uh, did this project they realized that hey uh, suitcases uh, uh, there's one huge market of suitcases that is uh, three two story or three story houses they do not have an escalator uh, they, they, they do not have a lift they also need to haul up the suitcases so what they did was that they have made it you know ergonomically in a way that they fitted some some you know brackets and wheels and this and that these are foldable wheels and if you see our chairman the chairman of hgfc mr deepak parekh he has been visiting us he is also a chairman of our governing council uh, so he saw that so oh wow this is amazing absolutely you are catering to an absolutely amazing market and that's a huge market and they do have a need uh, of hauling up the suitcase uh, so that he was going up and in fact he was joking and say hey isko main leke ja sakta hu kya this is absolutely astonishing uh, so uh, we have and by the way this is a design thinking lab as you can see uh, there are many other exhibits over there uh, you have a colleague from abbas is there uh, dr ayer is there uh, so uh, they are members of our team and all of these exhibits are here uh, so we have a design thinking lab uh, it's pretty empowered uh, uh, and uh, on the right hand side if you see the entrepreneurship committee Uh, is having their presentations so there's a pitch show was was going on uh, so we have uh, cost up uh, who is leading uh, along with the team uh, so that their sessions going on uh, and design thinking classes are going on and so so forth uh, that's our design thinking uh, sessions are going on uh, this uh, could be from the social development sector and uh, that's it uh, from here it, it is applied everywhere else 55 yes i think i i am on the button uh, so that's it from my side uh, thank you Uh, and uh, time for uh, questions uh, chats and replies i can uh, stop the share and uh, hopefully we can uh, see one another over to you uh, pratiksha so let's start with the question answers there are many questions which have come up uh, i would like to take up uh, the first question uh there is a question which is asking you if there is a link between uh, the global aid d concept uh and uh, also if there is a link between the hcd and the dt concepts uh the second part i can respond uh, the the hcd human centered design is the other way of uh, other name for design thinking uh, that's the hcd uh, so uh, some look at it uh, so that they don't forget that the human being is at the center so so they are synonymous uh, the hcd Uh, is is the same as design thinking. Uh, so, uh, what was the first part of the question? Global. Sir, uh, sir two people have asked. Uh, these are two different questions. Uh, one person has asked if it is linked to the problem solving technique of global eight D. Hmm. Uh, the other person has asked if there is uh, it's similar to the uh, TRIZ approach. Yeah. Uh, so TRIZ uh, also uh, much of the solution processes uh, problem solving. There are several problem solving techniques. Several. Uh, in, in fact, the situation analysis one, which is the trace one, we have the Kepner trip go. Uh, there are multiple. Uh, so the difference between those uh, techniques of problem solving versus a design thinking one, the design thinking is is more. Uh, I would say uh, it has a more much more questioning mindset, whereas uh, others have an accepting mindset. Uh, design thinking leads to an empowered uh, kind of team, uh, whereas uh, in, in the other one, it have a passive, uh, you know, persuasive teams. uh then uh, design thinking looks at a lot of in terms of the inciting it looks at a smaller very small uh, set of uh, users we go in depth uh so uh, essentially 
it goes by saying that there's a mystery, I don't know anything. Uh, whereas other methods, it begins by saying there are a lot of knowledge which I have, the skills which I have, the techniques which I have. And I'm going to address the issue which you have with the knowledge, skills and techniques which I already have. I'm going to fit them around. So whereas here it is mystery. It begins with mystery. Then it goes on to heuristics, trial and error. And finally, when we establish, we say, ha, ah, now my algorithm is ready. You know, I can I even manufacture, you know, I, I can produce uh, or I can make it. So that's it. So there is one more question uh, which says uh, if the sequence which you said the five uh, themes of uh, five steps of doing it yeah uh, also if the business strategy and the global uh, vision of the company matters if it if that has to come first or the DT process can be applied before oh super question uh, we do expect we to get this question uh, very often uh, in the last but one slide, I was mentioning there, how do we know that the structure, that the problem is unstructured or ill-structured? Mm -hmm. Over there in the first item, uh, I'm not showing the CPPD once again, but let me tell you is uh, the project goals, are they known or no, unknown? The second part was perception of your stakeholders, various groups, right? So if it is a strategy, uh, well, if you have actually socialized your strategy, the strategy has been, has been developed, you know, bottom up, uh, it has taken care of the, all the constituents, various stakeholders. And then if your strategy has emerged uh, versus, you know, there's something called an emerging strategy. Uh, th there is emergent strategy and there's something uh, called uh, a strategy, which is uh, for, for uh, you know, managing a crisis, managing a situation, managing a sudden change in the market. Uh, so uh, in, in the emerging kind of a strategy, uh, you can take your stakeholders into consideration because you need more time, you need more depth. However, if you are looking at a strategy which is, you know, it's up there, uh, it, you have already decided that you will go to the market with a variant of the product uh, with a variant and you have decided the three months to go, then your stakeholders are fewer. Uh, you will not do a design thinking. You're going to launch it uh, with the boundaries which you already have. Uh, so that's how it is. So, but strategy is a big area where design thinking works, but you have to give it patience. You need time. Uh, and uh, that's how you have to do it. So there was another question as a follow-up to that. Uh, is, the, uh, is there a sequence like if we can go with the POV point of view before uh, the empathize uh, or is it the other way around compulsory? No, it is all right. Uh, so uh, many a time what happens, you have an existing facility, you have an existing product available, right? And then it uh, sort of dies down. So they are on the other end of a product life cycle. Uh, however, you may have an understanding as to why you may already have banned in mind, hey, this will be the end of the product. I have to design a new product after, you know, three years. Yeah. However, it may happen. So happen that you, you need to rework your original plan. You know, your original plan that at three years would be the level at which this product is going to stay, but it doesn't stay, you know, in one and a half years, it gets knocked out of the window. Uh, you know, then uh, you can, so you have an original plan. Yeah, uh, that was your question. If you have an original plan and then you have, proof of, you have a proof of concept, you've already been into the market. Now, if you want to make certain changes, A, it is good to not consider that for a while and look at your uh, users group and figure out what is bothering them, what they like, what they love, what they're frustrated with, and then map and see what part of the original product which existed before can be brought in, can be dovetailed, what survives and what doesn't survive. Uh, so that's how it is. It's good to have something originally before you start your observation. It is good to have that, but it should not dominate your observation process. That's the key. It should not dominate your inciting process. It would be an additional input to your process. So Mukul Gupta has asked, uh, is the step define is like defining specs for uh, specifications for a new product? He's confused uh, the define concept of uh, the, uh, the, the define part. Uh, when I say, no, it is defining the needs. It is not defining the features. We are defining the defined phase, which is the second phase. We say we define you know, what does my user need. Uh, so uh, uh, Rohit went to the birthday party. Rohit's uh, need at that time was his privacy is to be taken care of, right? He may have the same issue in the organization where his team is working. His team knows that he has diabetes. His team knows that his lunch will be different. 
you know, uh, you have lunch from Vrindavan, but uh, his team knows that his lunch has to come from a different branch. So there, there is no issue of privacy because his team anyway knows that he needs a different kind of a diet, different kind of a water, different kind of a juice, different kind of an environment and so on and so forth. So identify those needs. It is not about designing the product. Identify the problems, identify challenges, which are completely new at that phase. That is called defining phase. Okay. There are lots of videos that are available on the web, you know, lots of videos uh, uh, starting with Tim Brown and Justin Farrell and so on and so forth, which actually tells you what are those points under each one of them. So there are many people who have asked you for books. So books, uh, yeah, so design for change. Uh, one is uh, maybe, maybe Ratika can uh, take up the, uh, if you can take up the list of those attendees and if you can mail them. Uh, so that that's one way of uh, getting across uh, creative confidence in the other is, is the other. And uh, so uh, there's quite a bit actually. As, as we can I make a request, uh, sure, we'll sure. be sending the recording. But mm -hmm. if you can just maybe write two uh, books on the chat here. Uh, and then maybe we can do a larger later with the recording. Huh. So maybe yeah, type so, in. Yeah, so uh, it's fine, but I, I just put that up. It's by Tim Brown, a Design for Change and Creative Confidence by uh, Tom Kelly. Uh, so, uh, so these are the two books. Uh, it, it is there in, in the in the, in the outline uh, of your course also. Because, uh, so <laughs> you can access your, your folders right, and right now your design thinking course is going on. So, so those are the ones which I mentioned. I, uh, I'll just do that. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, Tim Brown and uh, Creative Confidence by, by Kelly. Uh, let me take this opportunity uh, to thank, first of all, all the alums who have joined us uh, from across the globe and across all the programs today for their participation and the wonderful question answers. Also, Suranjan sir, for such an insightful webinar. People have all loved the examples you have given, sir. And of course, uh, the alumni relations uh, to keep arranging many more such webinars for all of us to keep learning from. There, there is also going to be another uh, webinar on uh, 4th of July. Uh, that is an introduction to game theory by Professor Prem Chandrani. Uh, you will get uh, mails related to this from the Allen's office. And thanks all for coming today. Thank, Thank you. you to you also, Pratiksha. Thank you. Okay. Super thanks. Uh, uh, I'm speechless. Uh, uh, starting with uh, Sheetal, uh, you have been at it uh, right from the beginning, uh, continuously fabulous, unbelievable. So, uh, Namaste to you, uh, Ratika, for leading the charge. Uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, I can see Hari Haran there and Jashi, madam, technologically. What will technology do here if you are not there, madam? Oh, God, amazing. And uh, Pratiksha, uh, Pratsi, so, so good to see you. Uh, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. And super thank you.